I'm like, yo, bro, slow that thought down. Slow it down, bro. Get the deal. All right. I don't want to take up too much time because I want to dive into guest speaker number one. This man is known as the Whiz Kid. I don't think, I don't think like, I'm not going to do this any justice, but for context, he was a consultant for Grant Cardone and Cardone and Kern. Part of him, they had that uh, agency for a short period of time. This man stepped in as a consultant, help out their team. And I got a quick story. And Omir, are you on here? And if you're not, that's cool. We don't really need you right now. But um, a few months back, guys, 7FA was in a legit threat because we could not buy an appointment for like, for our life, literally. We've tried a thousand different things, paying all these consultants, buying all these seasoned ad accounts. And we've all dealt with, as agency owners and in the people in the marketing space, we've all dealt with the Facebook, like, psh, 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 Facebook whip. I don't even know how to put it at this point. But this man, single-handedly, we taxed him. We said, hey, we want you to come in and solve this problem of us having banned accounts, of has, up, us starting, at, starting ads up, and then within a week, two weeks, now they're down again. And he single-handedly came in. And I know you got a team, man. I know, I know you love the team, but bro, you were the game changer that came in and kind of you know, turned things around. This man came in, and I'm more confident than ever that we're not going to deal with bans ever again, at least not to the extent that we dealt with it in the past. And so... Without further ado, I want to introduce Edwin Torres, the legend himself. Drop a one if you're hyped for this. Guys, he's going to walk you guys through how to never get your ad account banned ever again. And as a bonus, as a nice little bonus, he's going to be talking about the, the new iOS 14 update. We got some sauce for you guys. By the way, before you dive in, Edwin, because I want you to dive in. Um, yo, he gave me a sneak peek into his slides. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh my God. I don't understand who raised this man. I don't know where he came from, but geez, you guys are in for some heat. You're literally the ultimate hype man of all time. For I'm just, real, man. All I'm saying is I got a sneak peek and I had to leave the room. I had to leave the room. All right, I'm done. I'm done. That's awesome. That's gonna be hard to follow up though, but I'm excited to be here. Um, I think everybody here is in the inner circle, correct, Sergio? Uh, yes, today we have something special. Mm -hmm. We allowed a select few people, a select few people from Seven FA, just the core program, cool. to come in and experience Tesla Day. This is their first ever Tesla Day, and for the rest of uh, IC, this is their second Tesla Day. Perfect, perfect. So, like my approach to this is like I wanted to give you guys like the most practical, the most cutting edge stuff that we're actually doing like day in day out inside of Seven FA, and I didn't want to put any fluff at all. So. Uh, let me actually share my screen and uh, begin. So basically what I want to do is kind of walk you through how to create bulletproof Facebook ads. And this is like pretty much insider secrets from I've ran probably millions right now of in terms of ad spend on Facebook. So I've learned like what not to do, what to do. And like what Sergio said, like once when I came inside of here, what they told me was that every ad account is getting shut down after a couple of weeks. They weren't able to scale and that's affecting how many book calls you're able to get. It's affecting how, how fast it can grow. And I've spoken to a couple of people, I had to interview a couple of people and that's a very prevalent issue. So in today's presentation, my goal is to pretty much show you guys what we were able to do to try to mitigate against all of that. And we've been running ads for probably last two, three weeks, have not had any issues. We're scaling pretty quick right now. Um, so that's gonna be my goal today. And like he said, as a bonus, uh, we're going to talk about iOS 14 and it's something super uh, top of mind for most media buyers, most marketers. Um, we're going to get a little bit deeper into that. And there are solutions that you can do uh, to try to solve that. So who am I? Like, why should you even care about me? Why should you even listen? What makes me qualified to even speak about any of this? So put a nice little fancy photo of me, but I am the director of paid media for 7FA. I joined the team in January and I've been helping them out with their Facebook ad ecosystem. And now we're actually launching ads and all of that. Uh, I've managed as high as 500K a month in advertising uh, across multiple industries, niches. Easy have helped over hundred plus businesses with their marketing strategy, with their paid ads, um, their client acquisition. Um, 
like what Sergio said, I used to work for Grant Cardone and Frank Kern uh, down here. So I'm based in Miami. They are in Aventura, which may be like an hour away from me. Um, so I was actually one of the first people that they hired on board and I helped them out there and that turned to like a million, multi-million dollar advertising agency. And I've also worked with local businesses. Right? I know a lot of you guys work with local businesses, uh, two comic club award winners as well, helped been a part of some really big launches, coaches, entrepreneurs, all of that. So uh, all I got to say is you're in good hands and the stuff I'm going to share with you today is going to help you guys Whoa. out. You clean it nice, bro. I see you looking like Diddy out here. You clean it nice, bro. Dude, I, ha I had to put on the suit for this presentation, man. You were like a model on the side? A little bit. Something no, that was, <laughs> Something on the side. <laughs> nah. By the way, um, guys, he's, um, the, the most effective way to go about this is I know after this presentation, you guys are going to have questions. So uh, what Edwin suggested was reserve your questions till the end that because your question might be answered in the presentation. Just want to give you guys a heads up. Awesome. Appreciate that. So like I said, I want to make this as interactive as possible. I would prefer questions to be at the end because there's probably some questions you might have that I answer in, a, in another slide. Um, but anyway, so you guys already know Facebook bans are becoming more and more frequent every day. I don't have to tell you that some of you guys, have, how many guys have actually had ad accounts like shut down like recently? Can you, I like what Sergio did. Can you put a one in the chat if you've had an ad account shut down? Let me see where's the chat at. Let me see. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So decent amount. All right, so basically, um, I already asked that. So it sucks and it becomes very stressful. Uh, when an ad account shut down, you might be onboarding a brand new client, literally the day after you onboard them, the whole account's shut down. They don't really know the ins and outs when it comes to Facebook. They're probably already hesitant uh, when it came to even working with you since there's so many marketing agencies that burn people. So you're in a really bad spot if an ad account gets shut down, even worse, if a business manager gets shut down, that's even more stressful because those are usually a lot harder to get back. Uh, and probably some of you guys are already doing this. A lot of people are moving ship over to YouTube ads and Google ads, which is smart and you should do that to diversify. Uh, but there's still a lot of money on Facebook and it's just about going about it the smart way and not the way that everybody else goes about it. Uh, so there is a way to fight back against Mr. Mean O. Zuckerberg. And in this presentation, you're going to learn how we created the unbannable Facebook ad ecosystem. And took me, I came in, took me probably like 30 days to really kind of think about it, ask around, structure it out. It's not complicated, but it is effective in the way it's done. Um, and then I'm also going to go into best practices. So how to set up your business managers, how to set up your ad accounts. And we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook ad copy as well. So again, disclaimer, so nothing in life is guaranteed. So I cannot promise that you'll never, ever, ever have an ad account ever banned again, because Facebook is way too volatile. Um, they, sometimes the robots just freak out and they ban an account. But what I can say is that if you implement what I'm gonna show you today, the risk of that happening is going to just minimize drastically. Um, and like I said, we've been running ads a couple thousand dollars a day starting it off and we've had zero issues with any ad accounts going down any business managers going down so I can attest works that. and all that i could attest to that mm -hmm. i like awesome. i like when the, i like when the leads and appointments come in right omir makes us feel oh. nice and tingly. oh it's the best it's it's it gets but, us going to say that but edward before you move forward yeah before because i know you're about to dive into the sauce i yes, feel sir. it like I, I saw it i felt it <laughs> i got the chills we should like, should we just hop off Zoom unless these guys are ready, unless they're hype, unless they're excited for this, unless they're focused, paying attention? Should we just like bounce? Should we just dip? Should we just dip out? I'm, I'm down. You guys <laughs> want to so. dip? Kyle, yeah, quick, you're smiling. Wants to dip? Kyle, should we dip? You sure? Quick, quick little lift session in. Why not, right? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Um, your show, bro. Cool. All right, man. So, can I get some ones? Let me get some engagement. I want you guys being here active, man. Can I get some ones in the chat? Hype me up, man. I took way too long on this presentation. I want to make sure you guys get value out of this. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. So here's how the average agency's business manager looks like. So it's basically you just got one business manager and you have all your ad accounts on it. And the problem with this approach is that if 
your biz manager goes down, all your ad accounts are done and you're left in the dust and pretty much shut down your business overnight. Or even worse, if one ad account goes down, what ends up happening is that you cannot create other ad accounts until that one uh, gets re reinstated. So pretty much if you're smart, you build out a ton of ad accounts within a new business manager, but sometimes you might not know um, that you could create more ad accounts. So you might have one taken down. And for example, if you only have four in, an ad, in a business manager, if one's taken down, then you only really have three left to work with. And then if those go down, you're pretty much just cutting yourself short and uh, it can lead to a ton of stress. And this is kind of the usual approach that most people follow. And for the most part, you are good doing it this way if you follow some of the best practices. Um, but I wanted to make it a little bit better, add a little bit extra layer of protection. So like I said, if your business manager goes down, your whole business goes down with it. And the goal for Facebook should be to spread out the risk as much as possible. If you centralize all the risk into one business manager, you're going to get screwed. Uh, but if you spread it out a little bit more, then it's going to be a lot harder for pretty much your whole business to get shut down overnight. Um, like I said, the most important key, and I'm going to break down to exactly how this is going to look, is to have multiple business managers. And you have to structure the way you have everything set up in the proper way to protect yourself and to protect all of your ad accounts. So we're going to go into all of that right now. So like I said, when I came to 7FA, they were dealing with ad accounts being shut down left and right. And they were honestly afraid to scale. Like I was at a previous job before this and I hopped on the call with Mark, if you guys know him, and he pretty much had to like twist my arm to even come here and help you guys out. And then when I came in here, I saw everything you guys were doing. Um, and he pretty much was just terrified. He's like, dude, we cannot scale. We're salespeople are, 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 threatening to leave we're not able to get as many appointments as we want we need to have this issue resolved uh, but like i said once we implemented this no ad accounts have gone down since so this is kind of a very high level overview of how it's going to work so you have me no zuckerberg on the far left and it's pretty much him his reps his agents all of them are, con are robots to constantly look at your ad accounts to see what can what are you doing or what are you saying that they can get uh, get get you flagged or get your ad accounts taken down. So what we had to implement is a middle layer. So I call it like the bulletproof layer that takes a lot of the heat from Facebook and it protects your original business manager on the far right of this. So this is almost like a middleman in the sort of way to where that one's going to take all of the negative pressure if that comes your way and your original ad accounts are not going to be affected for the most part. So here's the best way to set that up. So here's step-by-step -step instructions. So you need two business managers. One should be created by you. The other should be created by a friend or a family member or your business partner, whatever it is. Um, you can create two business managers yourself, but to spread out some of the risk because Facebook does look at if I've had multiple business managers shut down, if I create another one, it already has almost like a negative uh, history in their eyes. So it's better for you to create one uh, that's one yourself and then one somebody else in a completely different house, different Wi-Fi network, all of that. So there's no footprint. So your business manager is going to be called the core business manager. Your friend or family member is going to be called the feeder, right? So core is you, everybody else or whoever else business manager is the feeder business manager. You can view the feeder as the bulletproof one here in this example. So that's going to be uh, the front facing business manager where all of your ads are going to be running from. And the core, again, which is yours, that's going to be back facing. So that holds the ad accounts, but you're not running ads from within that business manager. You only do that once your feeder goes down, if it goes down. And so far, it hasn't gone down for us. And we've been able to really uh, get ads up and going and scaling quickly doing that. So the core, what you're doing in the core is you're creating all of your ad accounts inside of there and you're sharing it with the feeder. So the feeder has access to those ad accounts and it has access to the pixel, but you're running it from within that business manager. So you're pretty much trying to offset some of the risk by using an external business manager and an external account as well. So hopefully as well, um, whoever is a friend, family, business partner, they hopefully haven't had any, uh, ad account shutdowns in the past. Some people, they have their like profiles that's been um, banned like from actually running ads. 
sometimes you could get it back and get access back, but that still has like a negative history in Facebook's eyes. So hopefully get your grandma, get your grandpa, whoever it is, somebody that you know hasn't like fucked up in the past and use them for this. So here's kind of how it's going to look like. Um, so you have the feeder here at the top and you have your core. Now you could still create ad accounts in your feeder account, but you're not really going to be running ads from there. What I would recommend is that you have your core. I would max out how many ad accounts you could create in that one. In your feeder, I would max out how many ad accounts you could create in that one as well. And I would be constantly doing a either page like or page engagement campaign, either 10 to 15 bucks a day, just to not only be running traffic. And, and the most important thing that Facebook looks for is that if you're running ads, are you actually paying for the ads? Are there successful billing cycles? Are ads getting approved? So you want to develop that positive track record. So basically in the core one, what you're doing is you're sharing all of your ad accounts inside of here with the feeder. And you're also sharing the pixel. Now, some important notes as well. There should always be two admins on every business manager. And the reason for that is if there's only one admin and if an account goes down or if your business manager gets like disabled or whatever, you can't do anything after that. You're pretty much screwed for the most part. It's important to have somebody else who's not banned or who's not banned from running ads or whatever to who can go inside there, um, request a review, talk to support, things like that, which if you're the only person in there, it's going to not let you do any of that. Um, like I said, each business manager will add the page to itself. So you can't really share a page between business managers. So the feeder would have whatever your, your, your page is and your core would also have whatever your page is. And you're pretty much just sharing access from the core to the feeder. So it's almost like the feeders are front facing is running all of the ads. And yes, you could create ad accounts inside of there and you could warm those up. And you could probably use those first before even touching the core ad accounts. Um, but the simplest way possible is just you're pretty much sharing access over and it does help add an extra layer of protection to everything you're doing. And if you have any questions, just hold on. I will answer those at the end. Just make sure you write them down. Um, but hopefully you guys got the gist of all of that. So the way to do it is you pretty much go inside your business settings. You click on ad accounts and you assign a partner and you get your partner, uh, your partner ID by going to the business info and you just share it. And you do that for all of the ad accounts. And you also do that for the pixel as well. Um, to add an admin, you just go inside the users and you pretty much just click on add people and just add whoever that person is that you're, that, that's the feeder business manager. And that's gonna be the easiest way to do that. So again, put your business ID inside of there once you click on add partner and just click on manage ad account. And that's gonna be the quickest way to do that. So it's gonna be some important stuff. So the feeder account, so again, the friends or family members, they must use their own machine or their own network. So like inside of my house, if I get, for example, like my brother's account, it's already a red flag because Facebook can track that, hey, these both of these people are in the same network and that can affect um, suspensions. It can affect a lot of stuff. So make sure that they're not within the same network at all and try to never log into the same network at the same time. So even if your grandpa's like, hey, here's my credentials, try not to log into it from your Wi-Fi. Use a VPN, go to Starbucks, go somewhere else for the most part, and try not to ever log into side of there because it will spark a red flag. And a couple of weeks ago, Facebook was going and making everybody verify their identity. And that's like an extra thing you don't really want to have to do. So all of the ads will be run from the feeder business manager before you use the core. The core should be as a last resort, last thing, um, thing that you do. Um, and another important thing too, you need a unique payment method on all of the business managers. So I was talking to somebody that was in 7FA and basically he had one of his ad accounts or business managers rather uh, shut down. And then he created a brand new one and he used his brothers, uh, but it also got shut down immediately. And he was like, dude, what's, what's going on? I used a different business manager. He's not even in the same house as me. But the red flag was he used the same exact payment method. And that's an easy way for Facebook to know like, hey, this guy's doing something fishy. So use different payment methods. I'm gonna show you guys an easy way to do that. But that's something that's very simple that people don't really think about, but that does have a big effect on Facebook and it does spark some red flags in their eyes. 
Um, so let's go over some of the best practices. So I'm just gonna scroll through these pretty quickly. So again, must have minimum two admins per business manager. If your feeder goes down as well, this is really important, make sure to remove yourself from the feeder business manager. So remember every business manager should have two admins on there. So if your feeder goes down, remove yourself from there. So there's no more of a footprint linking you to that down uh, business manager. Because if your account is on a lot of uh, suspended ad accounts, on a lot of suspended business managers, it does leave a red trail. Um, another thing as well that a lot of people forget to do is to verify your business manager. And that's pretty much you sending your LLC information, your business information over to Facebook, which proves to them that you're a legit business. It actually makes your account so much more stable and increases the trust in their eyes. Uh, a lot of people don't do that, um, which is it's surprising to me. But once you do that, like it's, it's nearly impossible for stuff to get taken down because it's that extra step that Facebook's looking for to prove that you're a legit business owner. You're not somebody from, I don't know, from a third world country trying to scam people on their platform. And it just gives them a lot of confidence from you. Uh, one thing too, when you verify it, so a verified business manager can create a ton of accounts. So for the most part, and it, it depends per account, but if you create one verified business manager, you can get up to 30 ad accounts once you have positive billing. So pretty much like has this person shown that they can pay the payments for their ads. So you could create up to 30. Um, and if you create a second business manager, I've seen cases where you could have up to 80 ad accounts inside of there. Um, and it's very important, like I, I kind of alluded to in the beginning, when you create a new business manager, try to max out how many ad accounts you can make. Because the second one gets taken down, you're not allowed to create any other ad accounts. And once that point happens, you're pretty much fucked. Uh, and it just makes your whole life a lot harder. Uh, some more stuff. Business info address should match credit card zip code. Uh, personal accounts can create two business managers. Um, and again, every business manager should have two credit or sorry, a unique credit card on it. So either you go to your bank or what we've been doing is there's a website called privacy.com where you could put your, your bank account in there and it issues like kind of auto-generated, almost like, uh, I don't even know how to call it, like fake credit cards that actually are real, but it creates like a brand new uh, credit card number, brand new like security pin, all of that. And you're able to just pump out a ton of cards. That's what I ended up doing for our deal. And basically every ad account has a different card in Facebook size, but they're all coming from the same bank account. Uh, the downside to that is I don't think you get points for it. So I do recommend if you want the points, go to the bank and get that done. But if you need something up and going quickly, use privacy.com and you're able to create unlimited credit cards pretty, pretty easily. Um, and then, yes, yeah, Max, sorry, go for it. Sorry. Guys, I know this is super high level technical stuff, but is this making sense? Yeah, make sure. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. I, dude, you're like a genius at this stuff. So I'm like kind of like, you know, keep up. <laughs> I'm in, the, I'm in the know. Uh, guys, drop a one if this is making sense. And if you guys have any clarifying questions, I know we said this in the beginning, write them down. I don't want you guys to miss, miss out. And then at the end, we're going to have 20 minutes or so for Q&A. Uh, but I just want to make sure, is this making sense? Should we go slower? Yeah, let me know. I can't see the chat. It's not popping up for me. So you have to let okay. me know what it says. It's all good. It's all good. Edwin's from Miami. Miami's ten, people from Miami tend to talk fast too. So... I know it's a gift and a curse, man. I know, I know. All right, brother, your show, man. All right, sweet. Uh, let's keep it going. So, ad accounts, best practices. Here's something a lot of people don't do, and it's not like a um, what's the word? Like it's not going to break or make your account, but you should really only run ads from one page per ad account. So, if your page is marketing agency, try not to run ads from marketing agency two on your ad account. Uh, you should only run one offer as well. So if you have marketingagency.com, try not to run from marketingagency2.com. And again, like this is just best practices. You could probably get away with it, but if you want to be ultra safe, I'll try to keep one page per ad account and one offer or domain per ad account. Um, and all ad accounts should run traffic to the same page for the most part. Um, another extra step you can do, like if an ad account does go down to prove to Facebook that you are uh, I guess, like actually trying to not violate policies is there's a Facebook blueprint, which is pretty much like a course that they offer to people. And inside of there, there's like an ad policies section where it kind of just gives you some info 
on what you can or cannot say. And uh, if you pass that, you could go and tell Facebook support like, hey, look, I already did all of this. Um, I apologize. I didn't know I violated the policy um, and pretty much just beg for their forgiveness for the most part. But usually like they'll they'll be pretty lenient once you show them that. So how to warm up an ad account is pretty easy. Run a like or page boost campaign until you reach the first billing cycle. Ideally, you'd have multiple successful billing cycles. So try to have a card that actually has money on it. Um, you should only add new ad accounts to a new business manager after you get successful billing. So I think you're only allowed to create five at first or four or five. Once you get successful billings, they'll unlock the ability for you to create more ad accounts. Um, and one form of payment, so one credit card can be used on nine ad accounts. So once you start creating a lot more than nine, that's when you should have a new card in there or it's not gonna allow you to do it. The downside of having all of these ad accounts is you do have to create new audiences from scratch, but that's just the name of the game when it comes to Facebook. Now, here is a big tip. So you can do all of the stuff that we did before, setting up those multiple business managers, sharing access, warming up uh, your ad accounts, making sure that everything's correct there. A big thing people forget is the actual ads. So the ad copy, and that's going to be the first thing that Facebook's going to be looking at. So make sure your ad copy is compliant and pretty high level group inside of here. So I'm sure you guys kind of are aware of some of the rules when it comes to Facebook, like don't lie, don't overpromise. Uh, they hate it when you use negative um, assumptions about the user. Like you can't say, do you hate yourself because your business sucks? Like you can't say stuff like that because they want people feeling happy and uh, confident when they're on Facebook. So try not to use negative wording or negative language. Uh, again, view, review the Facebook app policies regularly and also never mass publish. So if you're in a brand new ad account, try not to publish like 10 different ads on in one go, because if they all get rejected, you're getting 10 red marks on you like quick. And that will create a really bad look in Facebook's eyes. So what I like doing is I like creating like maybe one, two, three max um, ads, making sure they get a, a approved first, and then I'll create more. Another tip you can do is to grab the post ID. So pretty much you go to the Facebook post, you grab the little post ID. And if you use that, it's a lot easier for you to get a lot of ads up because Facebook already has a, they have like a system that knows like, okay, this post is already approved. So it's going to be a lot easier to get more stuff up. Uh, so hopefully that part made sense. I'm going to answer all your questions. Make sure you have to write it down. Let's talk about iOS 14, which is a big thing that a lot of people are worried about, understandably. Um, and as I made this presentation, nobody really has the answers right now. So there's a lot of um, best guesses, best practices that we're doing, but until the update gets rolled out to everybody, we're not really gonna know how bad it's gonna be or um, the real solutions for it. So this, this is what you can do, this is based off Facebook and I have a really cool service that you guys can look into that kind of circumvents a lot of the things that people are getting worried about. So this is direct from Facebook itself. Uh, Apple has announced changes with iOS 14 that will impact how we receive and process conversion events from the Facebook pixel. So the gist of iOS 14 is that they're gonna have this brand new update that on every phone is pretty much gonna say, hey, do you want to allow yourself to get tracked or do you not? And some people can say yes, but some people can say no, I do not want to get tracked. So the reason a lot of people are stressing about this is because when it comes to reporting stats to your clients, it's going to be a lot harder for you to have accurate numbers. So you might have gotten them 40 leads, but Facebook's only showing 20. And now the client thinks like, hey, dude, what's up, dude? I paid you X amount. Why am I only getting 20 leads? Um, and it just becomes a lot harder for you to make accurate decisions, even from is this ad set working? Is this ad working? Because the data is not accurate. So there are a couple of things you can do to try to help with that. So uh, let's go. So number one, verify your domain. And Facebook's been prompting a lot of people to do this, but there's still some ad accounts. And I have other private clients that I work with and their um, accounts aren't verified yet. So the way to do that is you go inside business settings, you go to brand safety, inside of brand safety you click on domains and basically you just add your domain and it's going to give you either a code that you can put on your dns uh, txt record you can upload the file or you can do a meta tag verification easiest is probably going to be your dns because you can just do that like in 60 seconds and if you're confused on how to do that 
Google has a ton of documentation on it. Once you verify, what's going to happen is not only does it show Facebook that, hey, like this domain is like legit, like you own it, um, you went that extra step. So it does help out with not having stuff shut down as much. But the next thing it's going to do is going to allow you to unlock the ability to, to track conversion events. So downside with the iOS 14 update is that Facebook was now forced to only allowing you per verified domain to track eight conversion events. Uh, basically, I don't know the reason why it's eight, why it's not 10 or whatever, but they're like, hey, you can only track eight events uh, total. So what I like doing is I try to rely on standard events. So like lead purchases, because it doesn't matter if you have a hundred clients, you could pretty much use those for all of those. But if you have custom conversions, it can get a little bit more difficult because if you have three sets of custom conversions for every client and slightly different wording, you're going to run out very fast. So the way to set that up, once you have it verified, is you go to event manager, you click on the pixel, uh, you're going to have a new little prompt that says aggregated event measurement. And you click on that, you go to configure web events. And basically all of your verified domains are going to be inside of here. So I verified a bunch of these already. So for example, the one I have there highlighted is 100 agency appointments. When you click on it, if you've never done it, it's probably gonna show zero or it's gonna have like a little warning sign or whatever. When you click inside of it, just go to edit events and you pretty much tell Facebook, here are the events that I want to track and they have a level of priority. And again, they haven't really given a whole lot of details on what does the priority means. For me, I just view it as, okay, what's the event that I gotta know 100%? So for you guys, if you do like lead gen, leads will probably go at the top if you want buyers, purchases, things like that. Um, some people do custom conversions of like page views and things like that, which might be important to you. But in the end, at the end of the day, leads, purchases, really what clients care about. So that's how I would prioritize stuff there. So again, verify your domain and select those eight conversion events. And then you're pretty much going to be very good. Uh, but there is a bonus step that we're actually exploring now. And it's to use something called Cappy Box. So basically what happens is Cappy Box is a service I got put onto um, that bypasses iOS 14. So the update pretty much is going to restrict the data that's getting tracked from Safari, Chrome, or whatever other browser that somebody's using on their phone. And that's how usually the pixel worked. They'll, you'll go on your phone, you might buy something, the pixel will know, hey, you bought this. A way to circumvent that is to go through the Facebook conversions API, uh, which normally is very hard to do, um, especially a lot of you guys use ClickFunnels. There's really no set uh, documentation. I've spoken to Facebook reps. There's nothing there on how to do with ClickFunnels. If you do WordPress, Spotify, I think another one, they have some documentation, but for ClickFunnels, you're pretty much left in the dark. Capybox helps you do that. So basically you have your website there on the left, Normally, you would have to go through Chrome, uh, Safari to then send that Facebook or the data back to Facebook. Cappy Box works as its own kind of middleman. Um, it circumvents both of those and it works with the Facebook API to pretty much just get the, da the data from your website to Cappy Box and it sends it over to Facebook. Um, so that's an easy way for you guys to start getting some more accurate data. We're still exploring this and kind of testing it out now. So I can't give it my, uh, I guess, 100% flag of approval. That's why it's put as optional. Uh, but a lot of people aren't talking about it and some big marketers are starting to use it. So if iOS 14 is stressing you out, verify your domain, select the eight events that you want, use a service like Cappy Box. And I think there's one called Leads Bridges as well. Cappy Box just has a lot more capabilities. Uh, Leads Bridges is a little bit more limited. and uh, you should be good to go. So now let's do some, let's do some Q&A, man. All right, guys, first and foremost, can we give a round of applause <laughs> to the man, the myth, the legend himself, Edwin? That was super in-depth. I didn't, I told I you guys, I saw, I saw a snippet of the presentation. I didn't uh -huh. realize how intricate and detailed it was. And some of you guys might have to go back and kind of watch the replay because there's a lot of detail. Um, but I know we had a few questions. I got some PMs. Um, Drop your questions now. We've got about 22 minutes before Adam, right, Jonna? Sweet. So we might um, get through all of them, but uh, drop your questions, guys. Do you want me to scroll to the top and see what questions I missed? 
I say that might mm. probably best way. Let's see. No, nah, I would just drop your questions now, guys. Okay. We'll read we'll read them as we go. Sweet, so, sweet. Question number one here. It's the last one I saw. What to do if Facebook won't give you the option to verify your business manager? What to do if Facebook so Eric, what do you mean by that? Does it not pop up or is this like coming up like flagged? Or what's it saying to you? Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I can share my screen. Like literally I don't, I don't have the option because I've been trying to do this forever. Um, like I got, I don't know. I got it there. Like the, I don't have the option. What, what ad account are you or what profile are you running the ads from? Is what it yours? You the business manager? No. Like, is it like, does your account have any issues with it at all? Or? No, I haven't had, I haven't had any bans on this account at all. At all at all yeah dude that's super weird have you spoken to facebook support i lost my access to facebook support somehow so i i don't have access. Don't this, have facebook. is this the upgraded version of the, like the latest version of facebook yeah yeah hey um do you i have a solution for this if you guys don't mind yeah for it hey uh so you gotta i have the same problem with uh, my own business managers um you gotta set up an app so you got to set up an, uh, it's a really in, a simple process. Like if you just quickly Google it, you have to set up a Facebook app, like a mobile app and go through the beginning mm -hmm. process of setting up the app. And then it will uh, ask you to verify your business manager and it'll like circumvent that like grayed out little box thing. And you can go through like that whole process to verify your business. And you create the app from like a Facebook page. Um, I, I, <laughs> To, to be honest with you, I've only done it like twice. Okay. Um, but if you <laughs> you go to like you go to developer.com.facebook.com. It's basically yeah. Facebook. It's like the business manager part of Facebook, but for Facebook developers, people that put apps yes. on Facebook. So Stop. you just go to that website and then it'll it'll be like a big button saying create an app. You just create it and then attach it to your business manager or your page. I don't remember which one, but then it won't be grayed out anymore. Okay. I've heard that. I've heard that technique before too. That's awesome. what I had to do as well. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find a. It is a little bit confusing. So if you go, uh, I think it was Eric. Eric, can you share your screen again? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna try to write all that down. <laughs> <laughs> you see on the left hand side under accounts where it says apps. Mm. Under accounts towards the top. Right there, uh, below, apps. So like it'll be inside there okay. where you would have to, yeah, you would add the app and then that unlocks the ability to do that. I'm going to make a note and I could send it over to like Sergio. So you can send it over to you guys on um, like an easy way to do that. Okay. Totally. All right. We so, got Jerry's awesome. excited. GJ's excited. Jared's excited. David had a question. Can you go over the copy box a little bit more? Copy box. Yeah. So how it works, man, is basically it gives you like a web hook. Um, so you add your domain to it. It gives you a, a little piece of script that you put on your header, similar to um, like the Facebook pixel. And that's all constantly running. So Capybox kind of like knows, okay, what data is being sent. There's like a web hook that you put on there as well. That And that's pretty much what links um, the ClickFunnel stuff over to Facebook. And it is a little bit confusing. Again, like I put it in there uh, because that's something that like I got put onto it earlier this week and I was looking into it. I was seeing some tutorials on it and for the most part it seems like really cool um, but it kind of works alongside the conversion API from Facebook to send that data directly through instead of you having to do it through the Facebook pixel itself so I wish I could give you a better answer on that uh, I'm still also trying to learn the ins and outs better of it of how like the behind the scenes of it work uh, all I know is that the people I've talking to talking to some of my buddies they're using it and it's tracking their stuff pretty accurately. No, that's a great answer, man. So, and this is me just curious here. Would you yeah. say that unless someone does all these things, it's almost inevitable that they won't get hit with the, they will get hit with the Facebook hammer over the next year or two. Yeah. Like if you don't do the best practices and stuff, like verifying such a big one, um, that just leaves you at risk. Um, and if you don't have accurate tracking, then you're never really going to be able to make good decisions. So I would say, yeah, it's, it's very big. And uh, again, we don't really know what's going to happen with iOS 14 because it hasn't really been rolled out to everybody. I think it's 14.4 or 14.5, the update. 
Um, so we, we're kind of just seeing how stuff goes. And when I'm talking to reps, they're like, yeah, just use the conversion API that we have in Facebook. But that one's super, from what I saw, Confusion has set up. Uh, Capybox just made it just literally copy a piece of code and it kind of just handles everything for you. Mm. Um, all right, a few more questions here. So what to do if, wait, that's pretty, okay. What do you do if your personal profile is banned from Facebook? That was a common question. So that happened to me. Um, I can't run any ads from my Edwin Torres account. So I had to use basically my mom's account and uh, it, it led to some issues where like um, I did the mistake of logging in when I was at her house and it was like, who are you? Verify your identity. I had to put in her ID. So that's why I say try not to do that, but you, you would have to use somebody else's account. Um, probably invest in like a VPN. I use Express VPN. Um, I think it's like 12 bucks a month and you're able to, it has a ton of cities in, in, the, in the United States you can choose from. And I would just log in through there. That's the easiest way to do it. Cause if it's taken down the likelihood of them like reinstating you to be able to advertise against pretty low. That's and Edwin, quick, quick question on that. Yeah. Uh, Sergio, if you don't mind, yeah. um, can you still use that same laptop though? Or does Facebook track on the laptop as well? Like the Mac ID or whatever? Yeah. So what I do is um, I separate my browsers out. So Firefox, I, I, I'm logged in right now to my Edwin Torres account, Firefox, but all my Facebook ad stuff, I do it on Chrome. And for some reason, it just doesn't link the two together. So I'm literally logged in at the same time. Um, so if you use Chrome, a lot of people use Chrome. Um, I would probably pick a different browser. And then that account that you're using to run all your stuff from, that's only for that specific browser. Like I've made the mistake of opening up emails from my mom's Facebook account. When, like for example, an ad gets rejected. I accidentally opened it on Firefox and it literally shut down the account. And luckily I, I went on Chrome. I was like, oh, like this is a mistake. I put my ID and all of that and they brought it right back up. Like when you start mixing and matching browsers and accounts, that's when shit starts hitting the fan. Um, if you want to go above and beyond, yes, you should might invest in like a like a Google Chromebook or whatever and use that. But I haven't had any issues using the same laptop. I just switch out the browsers to make sure that one's only for this and one's only for that. And have you seen like, could I create just a new pro like Facebook account with a different email or was that well, so, Facebook like that? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I did that. And then basically where I got screwed up is they asked me for my ID and that's how they caught me. Gotcha. Uh, and I had like different photos that I had never uploaded on my original account, but they have like really good facial recognition and they just caught me quick, man. So gotcha. cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No worries. Hope that helped Brandon. And this stuff is huge guys. A lot of you guys know the story. Sometime last year, we lost close to 60 clients in a two month period strictly because of Facebook. And I had to pay, I think it was like 10 K or 12 K or whatever to a couple of people uh, to kind of, tr you know, try to crack the code. But at that point we were already like, like 60 clients is a big chunk, right? So this goes to speak, this goes to show the, the level of importance of dotting this stuff in. Um, all right. We had a few questions around the feeder process again. I think it's sure. just to get clarified. Actually, Kara, can you quickly give context as to what you want a little bit more? I'm just trying to understand like the, the process here of this feeder account. So like yeah. your mom, your mom's account at their house, you set it up there, you set the business manager up there and the ad accounts live in there and that's where you run everything, but you hold the pixel, everything in your core account. Exactly. Get that right? Yes. Okay. I guess. I yeah. Got it. So right. yeah. So for 7FA, we have two business managers. We have, uh, you can consider a backup one that we run all this stuff from. And then we had the original 7FA business manager and we just shared all of its ad accounts over to the backup. And that's where we've been running all of our stuff from. And that's been helping us out a ton doing it that way. Are you only verifying your business info address and credit card with the same credit card that matches your business zip and then you use privacy.com or using only your business. We got a few so, questions around that. Do you want to maybe just for clarification purposes, put up the this, this slide again? Yeah. Got you, man. Uh, 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 that's the business manager question, huh? Uh, it's the one with like privacy.com. Jared, did you want to chime in and make sure you have clarity? Yeah. I was just wondering when you're verifying your business info, you said to use the same address and credit card with the same credit 
the same credit card that matches up to your business zip code. Yeah. And then after you're done verifying with your same, you know, credit card from your bank, that's when you switch over to your privacy.com. So the cards from privacy.com would have the same zip code like attached to them. So if you verify, yes, you can use a brand new card um, or you could just use a card from privacy.com. It's not like one card is going to have like better preference uh, or priority. So you're in privacy.com. You're able to choose uh, where you kind of want your cards to be issued from. Exactly. Yeah. So I've never used. It. Okay, then that makes. Yeah, sense. yeah. So I had this pulled up. So you, it's like virtual payment cards. So you pretty much um, put your like main bank account, and it creates a bunch of virtual cards for you guys. I would put it up, but I just realized it's gonna have all of the card info on it. Um, <laughs> but um, they don't do yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, it will do that. Um, so that's what I recommend. Let me actually see. Uh, I might be able to show you guys. Oh, okay. It doesn't show anything. So for example. Here's how it looks like. So here's my privacy.com. Here are all of the accounts that we have on it. I saw another question come in, like, is there a limit on how much you could spend using a privacy.com card? There isn't. Um, so we have a ton of these. They're just getting charges from Facebook. And we have a bunch of accounts that we've just been running ads off of. So if I wanted to create a new card, press your create new card, literally whatever, like uh, test and whatever. And then I'll create the card here um i would do it but then it'll just give you guys all the card info and that's it it'll show up here on the side and then you pretty much just use that card uh for your ad accounts or for your business manager and then you said somewhere else in my last question yeah um, my personal my personal facebook account that i just use every day i yeah. should create two business managers on that account no matter what you should to be totally safe okay so one of them, like, I always think it's good practice to always be constantly warming up ad accounts. So like, if you create the other business manager, I would just warm up ad accounts on it. Um, another thing I'm not sure somebody asked is, uh, can you verify multiple business managers with the same business information? Like, can I use the same LLC on multiple business managers? I've spoken to some people and I can't give you guys a hundred percent, like, um, answer on that. Cause I, well, I wasn't able to do that on seven FA. But there's other people that I've spoken to that do affiliate marketing, and they said they haven't had any issues verifying two business managers with the same exact like documentation. So that's something you can do. Um, if you want to be safe, I would just verify the, the business manager that's like the most important. So your core business manager, I'll create a backup one and just have that just like warming up ad accounts in the background before like push comes to shove. If you even need it, you're ready to go. Because Facebook also does look at if like this account hasn't ran ads in like a year, even though you already warmed it up two years ago, it's like, it hasn't done anything for a while. And if you just start up immediately and start trying to run a couple hundred bucks a day, it is a red flag as well. So super what's annoying, your man. Warm up? Yeah. What's your warm up ad spend? Uh, 10 to 15 bucks a day. That's what I started off at. Okay. And I let that run. And yeah. It, it's almost as if you need to have, it's almost like you need to have completely different, um, absolutely separate, lives for each business yeah. managers yeah. like they are their own mac id id credit cards business managers ad accounts like it is absolutely isolated and separated from your mm -hmm. core is that correct yeah you're almost like decentralizing the risk yeah. of having everything on one thing and this awesome. is that's my last one thanks brother no and this, this is needed now guys heading into 20, the rest of 2021 and the future of agencies you have to protect your downside against facebook Facebook is a reality that we're all dealing with. And the truth is it's something that's in, you know, big aspects out of our control. What you can control is protecting your, yourself in case something does happen that's unexpected with Facebook. This is part of entrepreneurship. It's part of the game, right? Um, GJ, I know you had a quick question. And then Kara, this one might be a quick one. Does it have to use a US bank account? Does it have to use, that's a great question. Um, I have no idea because we only deal with stuff in the U S but um, yeah, I don't know if I have the answer to that. I, I could look into it. I could give you a better answer later. Carrie from Canada. Me? Yeah. Heck, heck yeah. No wonder you're so nice. I knew it. No it was just, like, I was like, yeah, she's nice. Definitely from Canada. <laughs> Shout out to the six. Um, GJ, you had a question. Uh, Edwin, uh, yes, thank you so much for this uh, presentation, man. You're a fucking genius. Um, <laughs> so, you. 
the uh, the whole thing with privacy.com, right? Um, that's tying directly to a bank account, right? Yes, sir. So from a business owner standpoint, right? Uh, the big reason why we use credit is because credit is not tied to actual cash. And if something was to go wrong, if we, if we got breached, if we got hacked, that that breach is not tied to actual cash. So it's easier to dispute. It's easier to get the money back if something were to go wrong. Mm -hmm. What is the real risk? Like from your point of view, what's the risk here? Uh, giving privacy.com access to the bank account because I'm like really reluctant to giving things access. I mean, this, I would do it. I just, I, of course, I would want to weigh the risk. Uh, does that make sense? What I'm asking? It does make sense. Yeah, it does make total sense, man. Um, and, I, and I agree with you and understand. So the way I would view it is, I mean, we've been doing it so even before I came on, like they put me onto privacy.com. I didn't even know that was a solution. So they're doing that like months before I even came on board and they've haven't had any issues with their bank accounts being um, like money taken out of or any type of like weirdness going on there in terms of activity. So I would kind of allay some of your fears there. Uh, also, I probably would not use these cards anywhere else other than Facebook as well to make sure that risk of somebody maybe I don't know, hacking your card and taking out your money, it's, it's more minimized. Um, so like, for example, I wouldn't use like these cards and put in that payment information like at a Starbucks or whatever, because there is a risk there. There are people that kind of like sniff out the network and try to do all types of fishy, shady stuff. So um, I get what you're saying, man. Um, and I think that the solution is just worth taking that risk. And we haven't had any issues at all at all and we we were spending a ton of money on on these all these facebook accounts we have had zero issues of anything happening i mean the idea of privacy.com is that they create these burner cards you can call them with your bank account so that nobody no merchants ever have your actual bank account information and the way that you connect your bank account it's actually through an api so even privacy.com doesn't have your password you can always make that disconnection if you don't want them to have it anymore but I've been using privacy for like five years. I was the one that recommended it to the team. And there we go. Yeah. Like I said, the whole purpose of privacy.com, the way that they advertise themselves is that they want your information, your banking information to be secure. And so all of their databases that they use to store your data is completely just diversified and spread apart on all of their secure servers. But again, they don't have access to your bank account. It's more so through an API, through your bank. And then so if we use privacy.com, we can't get points for like our credit cards since it's connected to a bank account. Right? Yeah, no, because it's it's connected to your checking account. Can, can I ask a question about privacy? But you can. Oh, wait, we're there it off. Go ahead. Should I not say this next stuff? Yo, you guys can use this for like subscriptions if you don't want to pay for the subscription after the 30 days or whatever it is. If you want to make sure that you don't get charged after, you just use like for a free trial. That's the next level game right there. Put a dollar, put a dollar on it, and then it won't charge you after. <laughs> But anyway, that's so for people I, that forget I, to cancel subscriptions. Right, yeah. I've been using privacy for, for quite some time as well. Um, and we use it as like burner, well, not like uh, like temporary card holders when we're creating ad accounts for our clients. And we've run issues where like we can only uh, use the card like twice until if Facebook says, oh, you use this card too many times and then we have to go in and create another one. I mean... I was just wondering like if that's normal, like if that's what everybody's experiencing or am I doing something wrong with that? <laughs> Cause it's kind of annoying. Yeah, that's weird. Like we're using the same card for uh, business managers that have like 10 ad accounts in it. So that's interesting. Mm, okay. um, that's like freaking out for you. Yeah, no, that's fine. I was just, I was just wondering to see what you guys, if, if you guys were doing it differently somehow or, mm -hmm. or, you know, but no, that's fine. Thank you. I know on the topic of privacy.com, I know it sounds sketch. Guys, Mark hit me up a few months back. He's like, yo, we need your social. We need your date of birth. We need like the date that you first learned how to ride a bike. And I'm like, uh, bro, what is this? This is super sketchy. I promise you guys, it's it's legit. It works. Um, and Jared, yeah, you do lose points. Sorry, man. Yeah, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I hate to not put a smile on your face. I hate to see you frown, but it's worth it's worth protecting your downside. All right, guys, we have literally two minutes and I want to be respectful of Edwin's time here. We do have one quick question. What if an ad account got banned a couple of times already and then you got hit back and then you got it back? Then once you publish a campaign and it, it gets banned again, should you just move on or should you use another ad account? So what was that? Jade, I think, asked that. So 
is it the same ad that you're trying to publish? Did they leave? Uh, oh, he's on here. Uh, Jay. Um, nope, not really. It was, legit, it was another um, ad copy. It's just that it's the same ad account. It just it, it got banned, and then yeah. I published another ad in it using like another ad copy, and then it got banned again. Maybe like it got too many red flags in it. Sure. Yeah, so like I've seen that happen. If you use the like, ad copy that's been rejected before, if you use the same images mm -hmm. have been rejected before, I've had like an ad account get shut down quickly. Like if this certain image has been shown that hey we haven't approved it, they're able to track that. So. Um, I'll start off there, like use completely different images, copy different website, and then have that as a fair test to see like, is it the ad account or is it like what I'm sending traffic to or what images I'm using? And if it's still giving you issues and yeah, man, that ad account just might just be kind of like screwed up, man. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I should just, we should just use another like ad account. Yeah. Um, how many ad accounts do you have right now? Um, five. But uh, we're kind of sketchy if we will use um the same ad account in that specific ads manager as well. Okay. Yeah, man. I would so start off with just testing to be out different creatives. Uh -huh. Test out completely different creatives, and then it's a little bit annoying, but see if you send traffic to a different uh, funnel and domain, and see if that helps uh -huh. ads stay up. I see. I see. Got that. Thanks. I Appreciate yours. it. I know we hit the time limit here. Uh, first and foremost, can we give a quick shout out to Edwin? Drop a one if that was fire. And and guys, if you want the slides, which I don't know, I don't know, they, they don't seem like we do it. <laughs> we hold back because I know this was super intricate, super detailed. Jared's kind of pissed. I don't know. You guys want the slides or not? <laughs> Jasmine, do we just not even give them the replay either? What do you guys think? Yeah, let's just stop recording. Why are we even recording? <laughs> Why are we recording? <laughs> all right uh no in all seriousness uh edwin that was insane we're gonna Appreciate give you the slides i know you guys have some follow-up questions um and uh, if you guys need anything else in relation to ad accounts making sure you're, you're protected especially considering facebook is dropping the hammer this year more than ever uh you guys know where to find edwin yeah just add me on facebook edwin torres you cannot miss me and i'm happy to help you guys out all right appreciate it man if you need anything from me hit me up Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thanks, Edwin. Right. Appreciate it, guys. Now.